Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Nebi Nuh alayhi salam. This episode is Wisdom of the Ancients for the Folk of the Future. So, I was reading an account where I believe it's from Bezels of Wisdom from Ibn al Arabi, but perhaps it was from uh, one of his other books, uh, maybe the, the Meccan openings. But he discusses the pyramids and he relates the pyramids to Nabi Idris alayhi salam. Now, it is acknowledged by many of the Muslim scholars that there is a correspondence between Nabi Idris and the biblical Enoch, as well as Hermes Trimagestos. Now, Hermes Trimagestos, um, he's often associated with, uh, with, with the god of wisdom Thoth, and as well as, um, as Hermes, from, uh, you know, who's associated with Mercury in the Roman and Greek traditions. Now, I'm not saying that Idris or Enoch are gods. However, they may have been perceived as such by earlier peoples. And there could have been uh, correspondences to link people together based on, on things that they shared in common. So, for instance, uh, Nebi Idris... And as Enoch is associated with heavenly ascent, ascending bodily into the heavens. So this is an important concept. And it's interesting because Ibn al-Arabi had a very, very wide-ranging knowledge. And yet he does something that's, that's very strange to me uh, chronologically, historically, because he equates Idris with Ilyas, alayhi salam, with Elijah from the Bible. And he says that, so he's saying that Ilias and Idris, he was a prophet that precedes Noah. So he's there before Noah, which is problematic because Elijah, you know, like from uh, many accounts, clearly shows up post Moses, much after Moses. Now, um, but I see, I see the correspondence because Ilias also ascends bodily into the heavens. So this is an interesting, interesting correspondence. Um, but what he was saying about Nebi Idris is that he had the clairvoyance of the prophets. Maybe he had a vision or dreams, something along these lines, where what he did was he saw that there was going to be a mass catastrophe, a flood of the earth. And so Ibn al-Arabi is claiming that Nebi Idris was the builder of the pyramids and that he built the pyramids in order to uh, preserve wealth and knowledge for the future. That books of knowledge were deposited here as well as tremendous wealth. Now this is, this is interesting because right behind us we have the Sphinx and there are indications that under the Sphinx there's been a lot of speculation about a vast library, um, a, a, a repository of knowledge hidden underneath that, perhaps a high-tech library from very ancient peoples, which brings us to a, a bit of interesting speculation, but it's, 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 worth, it's worth thinking about. So one of the things that we need to consider is that there's a lot of rumors about this being a place from uh, how can I say it? That the pyramids here may actually be much older than, than Western scholars are leading us to believe. That in fact, they're, they're significantly more ancient and may be from an Atlantean civilization. Some people say an off-world civilization. Um, but it's interesting because maybe Atlantis isn't what we think it is. Maybe aliens aren't what we think. I know that a lot of Muslims and a lot of Christians believe that aliens are demons. And then in a Muslim context, aliens are actually jinn shayateen. But there are some hadith that I had read quite a long time ago that I, you know, they may be daif hadith, but they're interesting hadith and they're interesting to think with. And what they suggest is that the jinn were here much, much earlier than humanity. They predate us significantly. I think I read 70,000 years. Perhaps it's even longer than that. But 
you know, and I don't even look at that as a literal time frame, but a very long time span that they, they existed before us. And that Iblis the Accursed, he was the leader of the jinn. And it's interesting because biblically, in the New Testament, it speaks about Satan being the god of this world. Now, I don't take that to mean God with, with a capital G. I don't take that as meaning Allah, but more as the ruler of this world. And many people are worshiping God in many different forms around the world, and they don't realize that they're worshiping Iblis. You know, and, and the thing is, you, you, we could be... Um, many people are, are worshiping Allah in a, in a form that, uh, like, that corresponds with their desires and their nafs, and not as ultimate reality, not as the most high. Um, so they've got anthropomorphic conceptualizations, almost like Zeus in the sky um, conceptualizations that are highly problematic when you look into it. So what I'm suggesting is that, that this concept of, of Iblis as the leader of, or as the ruler of the world, that right now we're seeing humans right now are seeking to manipulate human DNA so that they can have a patent on people and own people and have a slave race and eliminate the useless eaters in a genocidal event. So who's to say that this has not taken place previously in human history and that much of our history has been manipulated, distorted, changed, hidden, eliminated, so that we would not know who we are? Because, you know, know yourself to know your Lord. So if we don't know ourselves, then it makes it more difficult to understand truth and reality. And, and we can be deceived more easily if we do not have a sense of who we are and who we've been and who we might be. So if Iblis is the ruler of the world and he desires to be worshipped and desires to receive respect and devotion, that would only be... So perhaps we could look at him as, as a pharaoh of the world. You know, and Dajjal as, as maybe uh, like an expression of, of that. Because like, Dajjal is clearly a pharaoh um, when you look into it, even down to the one eye that's associated with Horus and Osiris and many of the gods around the world that are also king, king positioned. People like, like uh, Odin and Thor. Um, there's this one eye conceptualization pops up again and again. So when we think about... Iblis is the ruler of the world. Perhaps he saw humanity as a threat. And he saw us as not worthy of being the inheritors of the earth, of being the caliphs of the earth. He saw, like, he has a bit of clairvoyance. It, from my understanding, his clairvoyance is not as strong as a human. When a human is in a mature state, when we are in a spiritually mature state, we are higher than the angels. But when we are in an, uh, a... a like a debauched state, we're lower than the beasts. Hence the talk about the beast system and the mark of the beast, because beasts are beasts of burden. They're also associated with slavery. A mark of the beast would be a mark of the goy, the goyim, the cattle. We, we you know, like where we are marked as slaves, as, as mere, mere creatures um, who are being disrespected as is. Um, so it's just interesting that, that perhaps there was a high-tech civilization preceding humanity that, that Iblis was a, a leader of or participated in and uh, they had civilizations and perhaps the, the jinn, we, you know, I, I was reading from the Hadith that the jinn can be seen in, in a dog or a wolf form, you know, which, uh, in a humanoid form, which also suggests a werewolf type of connection. They can appear in a snake or a reptile form, which is reptilian. They can appear as smokeless fire in a mist-like form where they can possess people uh, and, and objects. Um, so they, uh, and so you've got a number, you know, sometimes in a cat form, feline. And it's interesting that Egypt, ancient Egypt also has a lot of these depictions of hybridic creatures with like human, you know, like, like sphinx with a lion body and a human face, which is interesting. And also, the headdress of the pharaohs, which used to have a serpent coming out of it. And apparently the serpents were fire-breathing. These cobras were fire-breathing cobras, which is interesting. So fire-breathing dragons 
so hybridic type of creatures. So anyway, maybe Atlantis was, was a humanoid gen hybridic place. Um, or, you know, like there's this relationship, I'm speculating, trying to pull some strands together here on the spot. But maybe certain knowledge was preserved. Maybe this, because I'd read that, that some people think that, Atla that, that Egypt, ancient Egypt, was actually a colony of Atlantis and a surviving colony after the catastrophe at Atlantis. And also Atlantis might have been where the flood took place or spread out from. And that, that the, the memory of the flood is related then. Maybe Nuh alayhi salam was actually Atlantean. He was from Atlantis and survived to spread the human race, the species, the pure, un, un, like, uh, untampered DNA. Like, so he, had, he, had, he was perfect in his ge generation. So he had DNA that was not manipulated because they were doing genetic manipulation in ancient times according to some of the texts. Like, and you can see evidence of this in Book of Enoch, uh, you know, like uh, also in, in, the, in the biblical texts, which suggests that, that humans were um, being manipulated and part of it was through magic, part of it through technology and a combination thereof. And so anyway, this leads back, I'm just going to pull it back to the very beginning. So if Nebi Idris, alayhi salam, saw that this flood was going to take place. He preserved some of the, maybe the Atlantean knowledge or the knowledge of the ancients here underneath the Sphinx or in, in the pyramids, even in the structure of the pyramids. This is very interesting to think about. So I'd be interested if you have, if you have thoughts about these things, maybe you know resources, uh, good videos about this. This would be interesting to think with and to think about. But perhaps Idris had preserved some knowledge for us here. Or Idris can also, remember, anytime we got a prophet in the Quran and in the Bible, we can read them as individuals. We can also read them as archetypes, archetypical people. We can also read them as groups or communities. We can also read them as collectives. So Idris could have been a collective of humanity that preserved knowledge for the future. And somehow this Idris collective ascended into the heavens, you know, like that, that there was, uh, maybe we had technology to leave and to move into it, you know, like in the Quran, the first time that I read the Quran, I remember reading about the seven earths and the seven heavens, and it, and it seemed open to, to new conceptualizations that there are other inhabitable planets, there are other, other realms, and that perhaps we're here for us to attain our maturity here on, in this world before we move into the other worlds back into a garden state. Perhaps we have to return to a garden state here within this world that's hidden from our view. So these are a lot of threads, a lot of information, a lot of thinking, but it's to get us thinking and perhaps to pull some pieces together so that we can see a little bit more clearly. So we'll think about this more together collaboratively, inshallah. Um, you know, forgive me for, for studying, stuttering through this. I've got so much information I'm trying to share and in Egypt, I found that, that we get interrupted and we don't, uh, like, we don't get to finish the videos so often. It's very frustrating. So I'm just trying to get so much out very quickly, very rapidly. So I hope that you'll bear with me and be patient with me. So until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.